Hi everybody! In this video demonstration I'm going to be showing you how to take the sides that you've attached and connect them to your base. So there's a few tips and tricks that you can use to make sure that your cube stays looking like a cube when you attach it to your base. Because it, sometimes it can be very easy at this stage in the building process to have your base push through the bottom of your cube and kind of mess up the shape. So there's a couple things that you're going to need in order to successfully attach the sides to the base. First, you're going to need your excess clay for rolling coils. You're going to need a needle tool, a wood tool, a rib, the sides of your cube, and the base tile. So you want to make sure that all of your sides are connected correctly, that they have all been scored and slipped with a coil attached, and they are secured and reinforced. So then you want to take your base tile and you want to check all of your beveled edges to make sure that they're all beveled completely and correctly and ready to go. Now I'm going to show you a little trick that I use to make sure that my sides connect to my base properly and that I make sure I'm placing the right side where I want it to go. Because once you place the sides onto your base, you're not going to want to move your cube around. So what I'm looking at right now is actually the bottom of my cube. So just because it's facing the top doesn't mean that that's where the lid's going to go. This is actually the bottom. I'm going to prep it and get it ready so that when I flip it, all I have to do is place it onto the base. So I've labeled my beveled edge bottom so that I know that that's the bottom. I'm also going to label my base tile with the word base so I know that this is where my sides are going to go and this is not the lid. Then I'm going to also mark this so that I know that this is the inside of my base tile. Now as you can see all my beveled edges are facing up. If your beveled edges are facing downward and you can't see them that means you have your base tile in the wrong position. So after I have those labeled for myself I'm going to check my base tile to my sides to make sure that I have a proper fit. So as you can see right now, there's a little bit of a gap and there's a little bit of excess on the right side of the cube. So I'm going to take my tile and I'm just going to turn it 90 degrees. And with that, my tile fits much better onto my cube. So you want to test that first before you attach it. Now I know which way my base tile needs to be placed and how it should attach to my sides. So now I'm going to start with my attaching steps. I'm going to score all the way around the bottom of my cube. And what I'm doing is I'm just very lightly dragging the needle tool all the way across the beveled edges. You don't want to press too hard with this. You don't want to cut through your tiles because once you have them in this position and ready to go, any mistake or any cut in your tiles can actually ruin your cube and you don't want that. So once I've completed that and I've gone all the way around the bottom of my cube, I'm going to move that out of the way. I'm going to take my base tile and I'm going to place that right in front of me. And I'm going to do the same step that I just did for the bottom of my cube. I'm going to score the beveled edge of my base tile. Now remember this is the first step in attaching two pieces of clay. I'm going to score each piece, then I'm going to add my slip, I'm going to score them again, I'm going to attach them and blend them. Now this is a little bit different than attaching our sides because I'm going to leave my base tile on the table. I'm not going to pick it up from this point forward, I'm going to let the table work as my support when I attach my sides to the base. So again, I'm just lightly going around all of my beveled edges, making sure that all of them are scored and ready to go. Now I'm going to take my slip and I'm going to kind of mix it up. Remember, you want to make sure that it's the consistency of a milkshake. And I'm going to place my slip all the way around my base. Now again, you don't need a lot of slip in order to get this to connect. I know that some people are tempted to 
paint with their slip, but the more water and slip that you add to the surface of your cube in your tiles, the drier they're going to become. So you want to make sure that you're just lightly using the slip. Now I'm going to apply that to the bottom of my cube. Because again, what I do to one piece, I also have to do to the other. Now I'm going to go back and I'm going to complete the third step of my attaching process. I'm going to lightly score the bottom of my cube. And now I'm going to repeat that same process and I'm going to lightly score the beveled edges of my base. Because remember, we have to score, slip, and score again before we attach and blend. So now I have my tile placed in the position where I want it to go. Once you've completed your second pass with your score, you want to make sure that you set your tile in front of you where you want it to go and you don't want to move it from this point forward. Now I'm going to take my cube, I'm going to pick it up, and I'm going to place it directly onto my base. Now I'm not flipping my cube or leaving it in the same position that it was in and then placing the base on top, I want to let my base sit and I want to put the cube on top of the base. This ensures that you have a snug fit when you are placing your cube onto your base. And as you can see, I lightly ap applied a little bit of pressure. Now I'm going to go back in using my wood tool and just very lightly drag the wood tool along the inside seams of my cube. And what this is going to do is it's just going to kind of seal any pieces that are not fully connected before I attach them with a coil. Anytime I apply pressure with my wood tool, I'm always supporting the outside edge because I don't want to press my sides of my cube and have it push all the way through. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to set my cube aside, let that kind of settle a little bit, let the slip kind of stick together with my sides and my base, and I'm going to roll the inside coils. Now one of the little handy tricks I'm going to teach you here is that when you know that you need more than one coil, the best thing to do is to roll your coil once, so you want to use enough clay where you can get four pieces out of one roll. So I've noticed that some students in some of my other classes have taken small bits of clay and they roll a tiny coil. Take another small bit of clay and then they'll roll another tiny coil. You get more consistent coils if you start with one piece of clay and roll all four of your coils from that same piece of clay. You don't want to have some coils that are small, some that are big. You want them all to be pretty consistent. So what I'm doing is the same process that I did before. I'm taking my coil, placing it in front of me, applying equal amounts of pressure as I roll the clay underneath my hands. As my coil starts to stretch, if it starts to get weak in any areas, I can break it apart like I did, and I can just continue with the process because it's still going to stretch. So again, picking the coil up, placing it in front of me, and pulling it down towards me, applying equal amounts of pressure. So now I have one really long coil, and from this long coil I'll be able to cut four pieces that will go on the inside of my cube. So now I'm going to repeat the same process that I did for attaching my base. I am going to lightly score the inside seam. Now you have to be very careful at this stage too. Because you are taking your needle tool and placing it inside your cube, you want to make sure that you don't poke your needle tool all the way through the base of your cube, which is very easy to do at this stage. So what I'm doing is I'm supporting the other sides of my tiles and very lightly just making little tiny lines all the way across the inside seam. You don't want to poke all the way through your base or else you're always going to have that hole there. And if there is a place where air can get stuck, 
your project will explode. So we want to avoid that. So again, I'm just very lightly dragging my needle tool across the inside seams. And so what I do to one piece of clay, I have to do to the other as well. So I'm measuring my coil using the outside of my cube and I'm lining them all up so that they're equal lengths. So what I'm doing is I'm prepping my coils so that they're pretty much the same because you want to make sure that you have equal coils that are placed on the inside of your cube. You don't want to have lots of clay on one side and not enough on the other. So if you look at my coils, they're all pretty consistent in length and width. So now I'm going to take my first coil and I'm going to score this piece by lightly scratching the surface using my needle tool. Now I'm going to lightly add a little bit of slip to the inside seam. Now I'm taking my cube and I'm tilting it on its side so that you can see what I'm doing. You do not want to do that when you are working with your cube. You want to leave it flat on the table. I'm only doing this just to make it easier for you to see what I'm doing. But if you do lean your cube on its side like this, what will happen is the corner or the flat edges will become even flatter. So you'll start to have an uneven cube. So again, you want to let the table work as your support. Now I'm going to place my coil on the inside of my cube, applying a little bit of pressure. That way my coil attaches to the inside. And at this stage, I'm supporting the outside tile with my hand and just using my other hand to lightly apply pressure to make sure that my coil is attached. Now I have to complete the final process of this. I'm going to go back in with my wood tool and I'm going to blend out my coil. Now another little helpful hint that I can give you is that once you get your coil in place, you want to just make sure that you're very lightly blending it. I'm going to attach this coil completely at this stage and really work with blending this out just so that you can see the steps that you want to be completing. But when you get to this stage, you want to make sure that you place all your coils in there, get them blended lightly, and then perfect it once all of your coils are in there at the same time. So right now, as you can see, I'm supporting the outside tile and I'm using my wood tool and just kind of smoothing out any of the excess clay. Now you want to be careful that you don't press too hard with your wood tool because you can also poke through the base. So at this stage now that I've blended it a little bit more, and it's a little bit flatter, I'm going to go back in with my rib tool and I'm going to smooth this out. And what I'm doing is I'm pulling part of the coil upward and part of the coil into the center. I'm not using the rounded part of my rib tool, I'm using the flat edge because it covers more surface area and I'm able to move more clay using the rib tool. So as you can see, my coil is blended. I can pull up any extra clay that I have and fill any dents that I might have from blending my coil. But now I'm going to repeat the process for the other three sides. So you want to make sure that you're not just doing this for one side and then thinking that you're done. You have to complete it for any seam. So any area where two pieces of clay come together, you want to make sure that they're reinforced and supported. So again, I'm going to start by scoring my other coil. I'm going to score my second coil that I'm going to attach. And then I'm going to score my third coil. So as you can see, I'm repeating the same step to all three of my coils. I'm not scoring one coil, applying slip, scoring it again, and then placing it in. I want to complete the same steps for every single one of my coils. It saves you time, but it also helps you to blend your clay more evenly. So now I'm going to go back and I'm going to do my second pass 
with scoring my coils. And then I'll take my needle tool and very lightly score the inside seams of my cube. And now I'm going to place my coils on the inside seams. So if your coil is a little bit longer than you would like, you can always pinch off the excess that you have. And I'm just lightly applying pressure. I'm measuring as well, placing my coil on the inside. And as you can see, I'm applying pressure to all of the coils first before I blend them. So just like I had mentioned earlier, I want to repeat the same steps for all three of my coils, all of my inside seams, instead of doing one by one by one. So now that I have all of my coils in place, and I've applied a little bit of pressure to attach them, I'm going to go back in and now I'm going to blend all of my coils to my sides and my base. If your coils are a little bit soft, or you might have added a little bit of extra clay, or a little bit of extra slip, one little trick that you can do is you can leave your cube to set for a second. So my coils in this demonstration were a little bit soft, and there was a little bit of extra slip, and what can happen is they can move around. So I don't want that to happen. And I could feel when I was applying pressure that my coils were moving. So I wanna let them sit for a moment, kind of set and settle so that when I go back in with my wood tool and my rib tool, they don't move around. Anytime your clay is too soft or there's too much slip, this is a helpful hint to let your clay kind of set up and it makes it easier to work with. So now I'm going to go back in with my wood tool and again, I'm going to pull half of my coil towards the inside of my cube on the base. I'm going to pull it towards the center, and I'm going to take the other half of the coil and pull it up the side. So as you can see, I'm working with the center part and pulling it towards the center of my base, and then pulling the other part of my coil up the sides of my cube. And one thing you can notice at this point is that my coils are blended, but they're not completely smooth yet. So it's not going to be perfect right away. And this is something to remember when we get to the point of designing your cube, the outside portions. You may think that when you take the cube, or excuse me, when you take the clay or the coil and you attach it to your cube, that it's gonna look perfect right away and it doesn't. It does take a little bit of time blending and shaping your coils or your slabs to get them to look exactly like you want. So as you can see, you can kind of notice where I've applied pressure with my wood tool and I've made my passes to blend my coil, and that's okay. I'll go back in using the rib tool, and what I'll do is I'll use the long end, just like I did with my first coil, and by using that long end of the rib, I'm going to smooth out more area. And it's going to smooth out any imperfections as well. So right now you can see a lot of the lines of where I've used my wood tool. But now cleaning off my rib tool, I'm gonna go back in, use the long edge, and I'm gonna pull the clay upward, and then I'm gonna pull it into the center. Now the goal of attaching these coils to the inside of your base is the same goal as we did with the sides. You want to make sure that they're reinforced and they're supported. If you simply place your cube sides onto your base without attaching your coil, they're not going to stay together. As it dries, it's going to start to separate. So you want it to look as if you didn't add any coils to the inside of your cube but you do actually want to have them there. 
And this just works as a reinforcement to keep your cube strong and to connect all the pieces together. So as you can see, I'm making a couple passes now, cleaning my rib tool each time because you will get a little bit of clay buildup on the outside of, or the back of the rib tool and the side. So you wanna make sure that you're cleaning your rib tool with each couple passes or else what can happen is your cube will start to kind of gather up the excess clay that's in there and it'll become a little bit bumpy. And again, anytime I apply pressure to the sides or the base of my cube, I want to make sure that I'm supporting it with my other hand. And since my cube is on the table, the table is going to act as a support for the base of my cube. So now as you can see, it's starting to look a little bit better than it did before. I'm starting to not be able to see where I made my passes with my wood tool. And I'm also straightening out the inside edges. When you're working on the inside corners, you want to use the small portion of the rib tool. You don't want to try to fit the larger portion in there. So as you can see, I'm using the small little corner to kind of smooth that out it helps to shape up your corners and kind of square them up a little bit. If you try to fit the bigger portion of the rib tool in that small area, it's going to push your sides out and away from your base. And then you're going to have the sides separating from your base, which you don't want. So now I can go back and just kind of check any areas for imperfections, kind of smooth those out as well. Since you are going to be placing your hand into the cube, it is a possibility that some of your bevels could be flattened a little bit. So you can go back in, kind of smooth those out once you've gotten all of your cubes blend or all of your coils blended very well. So as you can see, I'm going back and I'm just kind of cleaning up my beveled edge. Since my hand was placed inside my cube, it is easy for my cube to lose its shape. So now I'm going to flip my cube upside down. And just like we did with the outside seams of your sides, you're going to pinch the edges. So again, anywhere two pieces of clay come together, you wanna to make sure that you're pinching those seams so that there's not a little line or a little crack down the side or down the base. You want to make sure all areas are blended and there's no areas where air can get in and start to break your cube. So I'm pinching along each seam, filling in any areas where there might be lines or cracks. And one thing you can see is that I'm not trying to complete this step all at once. So I'm not trying to make one single pass with my pinch. I go back lightly at first and then I go over it again and then go over it again, applying a little bit more pressure each time. If you try to pinch together your seams all at once, what can happen is you can then go back and you can actually wreck your cube as well because you're applying too much pressure and your cube will not be able to withstand that pressure and so it will start to bend. So you want to make sure that you just kind of lightly press, make a pass, and then go back and make another. Also use the tools to help you. So to square up my corners, I'm just kind of pinching the corners and dragging the rib tool along that. Just kind of smoothing out the base pressing in my seams. And now my seams are finished. 
they're all pinched together. There's no areas where air can get in. My inside coils are blended. And now my cube is ready to have my design placed along the sides. So at this portion, you're going to stop, bring out your design packet, and you're going to use that packet to help design the cube all the way around. We're going to attach the handle and the lid last. So after you've watched this demonstration, you'll go ahead and move on to the next one using your design packet. 